Hello, I'm Tim Gray, and in this episode of Tim Gray TV, we're going to take a look at some of the top new features. In fact, the top six features in Lightroom 6, or should I say Lightroom CC. This version of Lightroom actually has, you might say, two version numbers. If you buy the standalone product, it is Lightroom 6. If you get Lightroom as part of a Creative Cloud subscription, for example, the Creative Cloud Photography program, then it will be Lightroom CC, as in Creative Cloud. But let's take a look at my top six favorite new features in Lightroom 6. The first feature that I think is very cool indeed is the ability to assemble panoramic images directly inside of Lightroom. We no longer need to send our individual frames for a composite panorama from Lightroom to Photoshop to assemble that panorama. We can assemble the panorama directly within Lightroom. We can just go ahead and select those images and then choose Photo Merge followed by Panorama and that will bring up a dialog where we can process the image. We can choose the way that the composite panorama will be assembled and then process the result. And we have a finalized panoramic saved as an Adobe Digital Negative or DNG file in our Lightroom catalog right alongside the original capture. So a panoramic workflow right inside of Lightroom. And speaking of processing multiple images into one, we can also now assemble high dynamic range or HDR images directly inside of Lightroom as well. So once again, I can select the multiple captures. So for situations where the dynamic range of the scene exceeded my camera's ability to record all of that information in a single photo, I can capture multiple photos at different exposure settings, select all of those images, and then bring them together directly inside of Lightroom using the new option, the Photo Merge option for HDR. We have the ability to adjust the degree of de-ghosting we want to apply to the image. We can even have Lightroom apply some basic adjustments for us, some automatic adjustments that we can then fine tune as soon as the HDR image is assembled. I'll go ahead and process that result and once again we end up with an Adobe DNG, a digital negative file that represents that final HDR result. And we can continue working with that HDR image, that DNG file in the develop module, essentially serving as that tone mapping step for HDR assembly. In addition, we can also tag people in Lightroom, tag the people that appear in our photos. Now to be sure, we could always assign keywords based on the people that appeared in a given photo, but now Lightroom helps us to automate that process. When you enable the people feature, the people identification or recognition feature, Lightroom will examine all of the photos in your catalog and identify those that it believes contain people. It will even put a frame over the face of each of those people to identify them as people in your photos. And then you can tag the photo with the name of the person that name is added as a keyword, but now that person is recognized. And over time, Lightroom will get more and more intelligent in terms of being able to identify that same person in other photos so that those images can be tagged automatically. So a very nice workflow for improving your efficiency when it comes to identifying the people in your photos. Next, we have some improvements to the slideshow module. The music and playback sections have been cleaned up a little bit, essentially divided into two sections and streamlining the workflow there. We can also very quickly and easily disable the music for our slideshows, just with the flick of a switch, essentially. We have an option now to automatically synchronize the slides to music so that the slides will advance at a variable rate based on the beats in the music that we're using along with our slideshow. So a cool feature there. Also the ability to pan and zoom as part of that slideshow so that the images will pan across the screen and will also zoom in or out in a variable way throughout our slideshow. In addition, there's now a quality setting that lets us choose a balance essentially between the quality of the images that are included in the slideshow and then of course the higher the quality the more the risk of playback that is not especially smooth depending on your hardware so we have now some adjustments there in terms of the final quality setting for the slideshow there are also a couple of updates related to collections in lightroom 6. collections of course are the mechanism for synchronizing photos from lightroom on the desktop to lightroom on your mobile devices and so now we have an option during the import process, for example, to turn on a checkbox to add the images that you're importing to a collection. 
You can specify then, of course, which collection you want to add those photos to. You'll see that same basic feature in various other places within Lightroom as well, but the idea is that it's now a little bit easier to have photos added to specific collections. And if you're using lots of collections for various projects or for synchronizing images to your mobile device, now we have the ability to filter those collections. So on the Collections panel, on the left panel in the Library module, up at the top, you'll see a filter option. We can hide or reveal that little search box as needed, but then more importantly, we can type into the search field to filter which selections are currently visible. So a nice way to help keep those collections a little bit more manageable. And finally, what is probably my favorite new feature in Lightroom 6. Yes, I've saved the best for last, at least from my perspective, in terms of the top six favorite new features of Lightroom 6, and that is the ability to exercise even greater control over targeted adjustments in Lightroom. When it comes to applying targeted adjustments in Lightroom's develop module, we have three basic tools available. Those include the gradient filter, the radial filter, and the adjustment brush. But now, in Lightroom 6, we can combine the effect of the gradient filter and the adjustment brush, or the radial filter and the adjustment brush. So, for example, I could draw a gradient, drag across the image to define a gradient for an adjustment that will affect, for example, the top of the image without affecting the bottom of the image with a smooth transition in between. But then, of course, if I have a situation where that gradient then is affecting certain areas of the photo that I don't want affected, for example, here we have a butte in the foreground that is being affected by that gradient adjustment. I don't want it to be affected. Well, I can combine the adjustment brush with my gradient filter by choosing the brush option for the gradient filter over on the right panel in the develop module. And then, in this case, using the erase brush to erase away that adjustment for the butte itself. The gradient remains. I can still modify the overall shape, the transition for that gradient, and the butte in the foreground here will remain masked out in terms of the actual adjustment effect. So the ability to combine the gradient filter or the radial filter along with the adjustment brush gives us even greater control when it comes to defining the masks that we're using for targeted adjustments for our photos in Lightroom. So there you have it, my top six favorite features in Lightroom 6, which of course is also known as Lightroom CC now in the Creative Cloud version of Lightroom as it were. You can see even more information about all of the new features in a course that I've published in the Gray Learning Video Training Library at graylearning.com. You can find links and more information down in the video info below the video here on the Tim Gray TV channel on YouTube. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next time.